Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, Jonathan here with another Twin Motion 2025.2 video after the final release we just had recently last week. So basically today I'm gonna to look at one of my favorite new features in the new version, which is the cool static motion blur. Now I'm gonna do this by using one of the automotive templates that come with Twin Motion uh, for this desert scene you can see. Basically what I've done is I've basically just brought this scene in and just before we kind of jump into the motion blur, I just want to remind you how cool the Nanite feature is. So here you can see that I've just converted all of this kind of rocks and landscape in my scene over to Nanite, which is that virtualized geometry system that now Twin Motion uh, borrows from Unreal Engine if you like. So I just thought it'd be cool to remind you how that worked and how you can convert objects to Nanite. So I'm going to start off by going over to my uh, library and basically from the Sketchfab warehouse, which is basically built into Twin Motion, I'm really gonna drag in um, a much nicer car. So we've got this sort of holding car at the moment, you can see like a placeholder. I'm gonna turn that one off. Let's drop in this lovely Porsche. You can see it's coming from Sketchfab pretty well. Um, there's a couple of things I'm gonna do to this though to make it look even better. So the first thing is I'm just going to select the base. So if you double click into the Sketchfab item, we can basically select the elements within it. So I'll just delete that. I don't need that base there. The second thing I really want to do is show you how cool the car paint is in Twin Motion in case you've forgotten this. So go into the uh, materials library. Let's just go through to materials. So here we can see the car paint folder. And once you enter this, you'll see some absolutely beautiful colors. So we can drag and drop those onto the car. And yeah, that looks awesome already, that lovely blue color. Now, if you do want to know a bit more about the car paints, just have a look at the different settings within them. And you'll see that there's all sorts of things like the chameleon setting that you can enable. And that means that you can basically have like two colors sort of mixing together. So if I kind of modify that color a little bit, let's uh, kind of increase the exponent and the intensity. Let's just sort of modify that to be a bit more kind of intense, perhaps a nice blue color. And you can see a pretty subtle, but you know, very, very nice improvement to the car paint. So, okay, all of this looks really cool. Now let's focus on how we incorporate the motion blur. So to do this, you want to go through to the tools menu and in here, you'll see some new static motion blur options. Um, so when you first drop it in, it points vertically. So all you need to do is just get your rotate mode and type in say 90 degrees for that widget. Maybe I'll just move it up a little bit so you can sort of see the direction of those arrows. And there it is. Now, in order to apply the motion blur, it's super simple. Just drag the item into the linear blur. So basically that becomes a child of the linear blur itself. And you can now see that linear blur has been applied beautifully to that Porsche, you know, giving a really nice impression of speed. Now I really like the way you can vary the intensity just with this slider. And just basically one really cool feature is if you click invert, then essentially everything else gets blurred. So this is really cool for maybe looking at how you could blur, for example, the background and give the impression of maybe the camera moving with the car there. So I'm pretty happy with this view already. Uh, let's click plus and save that view and just let the lumen regenerate. By the way, I'm doing all of this on my MacBook Pro uh, M4 Max. So I just thought it'd be interesting you to see, Twin Motion seems to be running really well on the Mac again now. Um, there was a period when it wasn't running so well, I'll be honest, but these days I'm finding it running very, very nicely on my MacBook. So very, very welcome improvements there. Okay, great. So we've got this linear blur. Um, what we could now do is perhaps just sort of put that back onto the car rather than the landscape. And now I'm gonna add in a second item. So I'm just gonna to go to my characters and get one of my casual posed people here. So what we're gonna do is let's find uh, Martin perhaps. So we'll drag Martin into the scene and there he is, he just appears. And I think you'll find the posed people are very, very good quality as well. So let's kind of spin this guy around. There's a nice new little feature that if you don't quite click onto the widget properly, you'll notice that you can orbit the landscape. And that sort of took me by surprise a little bit. I was doing that a bit by accident, but it's something that actually, once you understand how to control, it's a really cool feature. Okay, so once again, let's go into our static motion blur. Let's drag that in. Okay, so there it is. Uh, let's rotate it around so it's horizontal. So I'm just gonna type in 90 degree on the widget there. And basically let's drag Martin into that linear blur and you can see it's already applied. So what's quite nice is um, when you apply the linear blur to different items, 
you get the option to control the intensity. And again, once again, with that invert setting, you can now see it's applied to everything else in the scene, including the car and the landscape as well. So quite interesting. Okay, let's turn off the invert, let's blur Martin, and we've got that lovely Porsche blurring as well. So I think you'll agree, this is very simple to do, and it's something that I was quite surprised that Twinmotion were able to introduce. I wasn't really expecting this feature, but it certainly adds a bit of quality to our images. Okay, so with this particular circular blur, we can basically apply it to things like wheels. Okay, so here's a really great idea. Let's apply it to the wheel. So all I need to do is drag my circular blur maybe into that scene there, and then make the wheel, if you like, a child of that element. So let's just do the same with this other wheel here. So let's just check that that's the wheel. Yes, that's the alloy there. Let's sort of drag that once again, that element there within the Sketchfab um, import down into become a child of the circular blur. And you can see that blur is applied. So that works pretty well. Now, there is another nice way that you can apply the blurs. So if you select the item, you can click on the little link button. And that's even nicer in a way because now I can just click link and link it over to the items directly on the scene, such as the tire. And you can see that's now applied to the whole wheel. Um, we've also got the option to increase that intensity as well. So all of these little things add, add a nice bit of detail. The circular blur, I think you'll agree, makes those wheels look like they're spinning quite fast. And the linear blur, obviously that can be combined with the circular blur as well, just to get that impression of speed on the car whizzing through this beautiful desert landscape. So guys, let me know what you think. Is this something that you find would be useful for your visuals? Here's a couple of the views that I've prepared making this particular twin motion tutorial for you. So thanks once again for watching. Now I have noticed that lots of my subscribers don't necessarily have their notifications on. So if you are one of those, please pop the bell on so you don't miss all my future videos coming soon. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.